Who's he? Who's he with his marry me? With his ring and his marry me? The nerve to call! This is not, not what was meant to be. How could he ruin it all with those two words? I thought I knew him, thought he knew me. When did it change? What did I miss? A kiss when I thought all along that we were meant to forge frontiers. How could I be so wrong? How I need my sisters here If I can share my dreams What were they for? I thought I promised But that we would never change And never part I thought together We'd amaze the world How can I live my dreams Or even start When everything has come apart But home was all I'd ever want My attic all I'd ever need Now nothing feels the way it was before And I don't know how to proceed I only know I'm meant for something more I've got to know if I can be Astonishing There's a life That I am meant to lead A life like nothing I have known I can feel it And it's far from here I've got to find it on my own Even heat upon my skin a life of passion that pulls me from within a life that I am aching to begin there must be somewhere I can be astonishing astonishing time and place I will be fearless surrendering modesty and grace I will not disappear without a trace I'll shout and start a riot be anything but quiet Christopher Columbus I'll be astonishing
I'm so excited because I'm gonna go to the High School of Performing Arts. I mean, I was dying to be a serious actress. Anyway, it's the first day of acting class and we're in the auditorium with the teacher, Mr. Carp. Ugh, Mr. Carp. Anyway, he puts up on the stage with their legs around each other, one at the back of the other, and he says, Okay, we're going to do improvisations. Now, you're in a bobsled. It's snowing up and it's cold. Okay? Go. Day for we could try to feel the motion, feel the motion down the hill. Every day for we could try to hear the wind rush, hear the wind rush, feel the chill. So I dug right down to the bottom of my soul to see what I have inside. Yes, I dug right down to the bottom of my soul and I try. I try And everybody's going whoosh whoosh I feel the snow, I feel the cold, I feel the air And Mr. Carp turned to me and he says Okay Morales, what did you feel? And I said nothing, I'm feeling nothing And he says nothing, I got a girl chance they all felt something, but I felt nothing Except the feeling that this nonsense was absurd But I said to myself, hey, it's only the first week, maybe it's genetic They don't have bobsled in San Juan Second week, more advanced and we had to be a table Be a sports car Ice cream cone Mr. Carp, he would say, very good Except Morales, try Morales, all alone So I dug right down 
to the ball of my soul to see you an ice cream pie. As I dug right down to the ball of my soul and I tried to melt. The kids have nothing. They call me nothing. And car blotted, which really makes me bad. They were so helpful. They called me hopeless until I really didn't know where else to turn. And Cop kept saying, Morales, I think you should jump for the girl's high. You'll never be an actress. Never. Jesus Christ. Went to church, praying Santa Maria. Send me guidance. Send me guidance on my knees. Went to church, praying Santa Maria. Help me feel it. Help me feel it. And the voice from down at the bottom of my soul came up to the top of my head. And the voice from down at the bottom of my soul, here is what it said. This man is nothing. This course is nothing. If you want something, go find a better class. And when you find one, you'll be an actress. And I assure you that's what finally came to pass Six months later I heard the carpet thud So I died right down to the bottom of my soul And cried Cause I felt
killed. Uh uh. Four girls. Richard. So I took a deep breath and said to the man, You better pay up, or you're losing everything. He had it coming. He had it coming. The, the question, question is, am I to play? If I'd have been there, I would have I seen I met it. Richard when we were oh, still I young many years ago. And he and I had this special connection. And we bonded right he away. Then we started working together, is, go on missions, solve cases, get drinks, but have dinner. In just one day, it. I'm in oh, love, he told me, not to me, with name. Grace. He left he me for her, you know. Me. So that he night I called, I ignored him. He talked about his love as usual. You know, play. some guys are too insensitive. He had it coming, he had it coming. The question is, who did the crime? I didn't do it. Someone's gay, so I turned. He comes up to me in rage. You're ruining your future, he said. He was vexing and kept on saying, You're ruining your future. Then he would not close his mouth. He would not close his freaking mouth. I've been there. I would have seen it. Oh, I just hope they don't say my name. I met Richard many years ago. He was a fine gentleman. I was very young then, but he didn't seem to be bothered by it. He was excited about what I was selling. Herbs, dried flowers, leaves, vines. And then he bought more. He left nothing of it. I was really trying to be professional. But he screamed at me. And he got on my nerves. Yes, I threatened him with his mortgage, but I wanted to apologize. Fool, punk, stupid, rash, and wild chap. Imbecile, reckless, one right after the other. Was it's not like he's a father of mine. It wasn't until recently when he called me, he was in such a rush, telling me to ship all the herbs. So I sent them to him. However, when he called me that night, he was bothered and in a state of madness. Well, I was in such a state of shock. I completely blacked out. I can't believe a thing. It wasn't until right now, as I was thinking about the night before, I could have done something. He had it coming. He had it coming. He had it coming all along. I didn't do it. But if I've done it, how could you tell me that I was wrong? What have I done? done something when you called about your wife. I should have set aside my pride. 
think it's only I told you how I felt about you all this time. If you'd still be here. In another life, I would be a girl. We'd keep all our promises, be us against the world. In another life, I would make you stay. So I don't have to say. I wish you were still here. Maybe things would have been different for us. In the Hello, Miss Greenward. It's a surprise to see you here. Um, hi. I think I've seen you before, but my memory is quite foggy. Yes, we met when Richard. Um, when. He and I were stationed in London sometime in 2017. Oh, I remember! You were there when he chanced upon my shop. You know, Richard always asks for my lavender and chamomile tea blend. Last week, he purchased my special herb mix. Special herb mix? Is that some kind of intoxicating substance that could cause heart failure? Goodness, no! It's special, but it doesn't induce heart attacks. <laughs> By the way, how, how did you meet Richard? Oh, us? We worked in the company together right after graduating from college. He was special. I would have given my life for him. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Going back to the herbs. Lavender and chamomile, you say? I heard those are harmful herbs. My herbs are not harmful. Unless <laughs> you take too much. I've got ointment of poppy seed Put your straight to sleep guarantee Apply it moderately always It's just lovely Or perhaps if your head hurts too By this harvest of fever food Just take it with your food just lovely. Yes, miss, wouldn't you like to look at all the herbs I sell? Fevers, aches and pains all gone at the tingling of a bell. Got some food resting on your knee. Try this extract of green. Just rub it and you'll see a wish, and it just lovely, 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 lovely. Wow, there's something new 
new every day. Wait, I remembered. One time, when Richard and I met to catch up days before he passed away. I overheard him talking to you on the phone and he was kind of explaining. Oh, we were just talking about the debt he owed. Interesting. It looked like a tense conversation. Funny how he sent him a new pack of herbs after that day. I wouldn't say it was tense, just a loving reminder. That's all. Uh, at any rate, mother's over there. I've got to guide her to a seat. Hi, I'm sorry. I have been observing you from afar and I can't help but notice how nervous you look. I'm Agent Snow, by the way. Agent? Of what? Sorry, I'm just quite busy. I'm Irene. Irene Coy. I actually don't have much of a relationship with him. I'm here for work. I see. I work for the government. If you do not mind, what do you do? Uh, I work in a bank. Sir Richard was a client of ours. Why is she interested in me? So, why did they send you, specifically? I was in charge of all the paperwork for his bank loan and his due payments. I'm actually here to talk to his family regarding the loan settlement. Why? How do you know him? We work together. He used to be my partner, but he left our department because he fell in love. We were pretty close as he's a very good man. I mean, to us. I see. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. So his bank loan was the headache, you say? Was he able to pay up? Was it a big amount? Well, I'm not really allowed to go into detail about our clients, but I'm just exhausted that I have to be here. It was so difficult to work on his application and now I'm here to pay respects and to talk to his wife about his overdue bills. Not to mention he was quite demanding yesterday, which pissed me off quite a bit. My boss assigned me to make sure they pay up. Yesterday? You talked to him before he died? Oh, I, I simply followed up on his back loan. It has been very overdue after all. Well, you don't suppose, I don't know, that your talk may have led to his decision? Excuse me? Well, if you have been pressuring him to pay up on time, maybe he thought that dying was the only way to break free from his debt. I was simply doing my job. The man's debt has been long overdue. Not to mention my boss has been pressuring me to collect my client's money. I only gave him a call yesterday and gave him a good word so that he could finally... Okay, let's calm down. Think happy thoughts. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, I only discussed business matters with Sir Richard. I simply followed protocol. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, it was nice to meet you. I have to go to my colleagues as we're waiting for the real cause of his death. Did he not make that decision on his own? I don't believe that. See you around. It was just a small fight that happened to him. It's not related to it in any way. No, it can't be. No. <laughs> Why do I still keep crying? <laughs> Hi, I like your hair. Uh, excuse me? I like your hair. I'm Bianca, by the way, but please call me B. Thanks. Can I ask what you did with it? Nothing. Oh, that's cool. Can we be friends? Young lady, it's quite rude to interrupt someone, especially if you don't know them. I'm actually quite busy. What's your name? How old are you? I'm turning 18 in 3 months. Happy legality to me! I'll call you back. My name is Irene Coy. I'm 29 years old. I work in the man's bank. And with all due respect, I do not have time for this nonsense. What's your favorite animal? Mine to be. Oh, yeah. Is he an animal or just an insect? Mm. Anyway, guess why? Because it matches my name. Cool, right? Bees are so cool. They follow a bee. Only female bees are the ones working like patriarchy. Who? I mean, they're so smart. Means look at us and our leader <laughs> and see where is it taking us. Anyway, what's your favorite movie? I don't have a favorite. Guess mine! It's a movie! Have you seen it already? Trust me, you learn how to laugh when you watch it. It seems like you don't. Kidding! <laughs> the movie is so cool. How bees make money and all that. Oh yeah, wait, by the way, how do you know Richard? Silly me, I forgot why we're here. I got so used to thinking that whenever there's a crowd, it's always a party. <sighs> He is a client of mine in the back. I'm here on business. Now, where is your mother? Oh, she's right over there. Yeah, I live next door, so he was my neighbor. <coughs> my favorite one. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but since you're curious and you're already my friend, I'll tell you. No, you don't have to. He always catches me at the wrong time. It's like my mom paid him to watch me. And duh, I'm a teenager. It's not much of a rebel a little, right? He's there watching and judging. He was five feet apart. I was like, choose where you're going, your left or your right. It's like he doesn't have enough problems. Why can't he just mind his own problems? Like, uh, that's why I don't like him. Anyway, but he's, he's nice to others. Little girl, I don't have the slightest interest in your relationship with this man. 
You have taken up so much of my time when I already have so little to accomplish what I need to do. Were you not taught how to show respect towards others' privacy? You just couldn't shut that little mouth of yours, can you? Jesus Christ, this is a funeral! Let the man go in silence! No one's ever told me this. You are so rude. You could seriously lighten up, sister. I've been nothing but nice to you. Ugh, you are so boring and so mean. FYI, I don't like your hair that much. I just thought you could use a compliment because you look so sad. And you are so welcome. I'm the mean one? You're the one who talked to me uninvited. You're the rude one here. You have been bothering me for the past few minutes when I clearly don't want to talk. Dearest darlingest Momsie and Popsicle. My dear boss. There's been some confusion over in this little way. But of course I'll get the job done. But of course I'll rise above it. For and I know that's that how you'd want me to respond. Yes. There's been some confusion for you see this woman is. Unusually and exceedingly peculiar and altogether quite impossible to describe. Bald. What is this feeling so sudden in you? I felt the moment I laid eyes on you. My pulse is rushing. My head is reeling. My face is flushing. What is this feeling? Fervid as a flame. Does it have a name? Yes. Loathing. Unadulterated loathing. For your face, your voice, your clothing, let's just sing. I love it all. Every little trait, however small, makes my very flesh begin to crawl. With simple utter loathing, there's a strange exhilaration in such total detestation. Bothering me. You've been on my nerves since you first opened your mouth. I was just trying to talk. You could be nicer. I don't even know why you're here. You said you don't even like the man. What? Oh, gee, of course I do. I can't believe you said that. Ah. What is this feeling so sudden? funeral after all oh I'm sorry I just got carried away the kids too annoying I need to relax I'm just being friendly because you know according to the English novelist 
George Eliot, quote, wear a smile and have friends, wear a skull and have wrinkles. Hey, stop it. Are you related to Richard? I'm Agent Snow and you are? I'm Bianca Cruz, but you can call me B. Like B with all the honey? Nice to meet you, B. But I'm going to be straightforward. You're a neighbor of Richard, right? Why did Irene say you didn't like him earlier? Well, because he annoys me. But I don't mean to be rude to him. It's just... He was always nice, but... I kept running away. <laughs> uh. How can I party if he always nags me? It's just like my mother. They're like a combo. <laughs> like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> well, they're like fast friends. Anyway. That's it? You don't like him, but you're here. I'm curious. Um, I'm with my mom. Anyway. Do you like honey? I sell honey. Here, have a taste. Not interested. I don't really like sweets. What? You're the only person I know that doesn't like sweets. Has life been hard? I hope you're okay. I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself earlier. I'm Layla. You said you own bees? But I'm fascinated by bees. I've always wanted to make my own honey back in London. Yes, I'm Bianca Cruz, but you can call me Bee. I have different kinds and a lot at home. I just live next door. Why don't I show you? OMG, you're going to be my first British friend. That would be lovely. You know, I could give you some herbs that you could grow on your own. Oh, get me out of here. You are both too loud for my liking. I just need to talk to the man's family. And you look like you need some saffron. I do not need any herb. Thanks. Oh, I wonder how I could cheer you up. Just to remind you, for everyone's sake, we are at a funeral. Oh yeah, why can't funerals be happy? Kidding! <laughs> it's just, there's so many new faces, so many new possible friends. But okay, sorry ma'am. <sighs> I miss my bees. I hope they're having fun at home. I can't take this anymore. I've already interviewed all of you, but I got nothing. I really think this is my fault. If only I set aside my pride, if only I answered this call, maybe I'd still be here. Maybe things would have been different. Oh, it's my fault. I hounded him too much about the debt he owed. I'm such a terrible friend. No, it's my fault. I shouldn't have been so harsh on the man. I thought I was doing my job, but I guess I could have informed him in a kinder way. Money is a sensitive topic after all. I should have known. It was me. I kept arguing with him when he was only looking out for me. I was right. Oh, foolish. Agnes, well, child. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. Are you all right? I know we're all upset, but let's try to keep the volume down. Thank you. 
Hi, Grace. I have received a report from the hospital. Richard's death has no foul play. He died of acute pancreatitis. Did he eat that much before sleeping? Anyway, the good news is, may you rest in peace, Richard, but the insurance claims that your mortgage is fully paid, thanks to Richard. Yes! Bianca dear, I'll contact you for a possible business venture in London. Herbs and honey together. And our conversation last night had nothing to do with his death. I could finally sleep in peace. I guess this means that it's time to let Richard go and start moving on. He truly loved his wife after all. Goodbye, Richard. Let's go.